Hi, I'm Noelle Hyman with paperclipping.com and we are in the Ranger booth and I'm here with Diane Reevely. Hey, hey Diane. Hi, hi, Diane. So, um, we're just doing the previews of our, of our new products. So, my exciting products are, I have my stamps as usual. Um, I only ever do six stamps, four stencils. I like the fact that people think they can get them all. So I never come out with a massive range. These stamps are based on collages in my ledger journal. So we have the figures here. This is Endeavour. We have um, Escape, which is this one. And then we have them all as small, same. We have my usual very, very sweet sentiments. <laughs> what have we got this time? Laugh till you leak. It just makes it funner, funnier. This is my favorite. Dinner is poured. That's what you need on a night. And then we have the legs. Okay, I suddenly decided I, hadn't, I didn't have enough legs in the collection, so I wanted to do more, so we have large and small. So they're all mix and match, and they are, as always with my stuff, they match all my other stamps, they match everything that I've gone before. I have four new stencils in large and small. I have the keyholes, I have the squares, I have the skulls, and then I have another one of the, um, the ones that we take apart. So they come... They come like this, and then I just split them, and you get the outside and you get the inside, okay? Um, I've been working like mad. I haven't had a minute off, so I'm behind with videos, but when I leave here, I'm actually at home in my own bed for two weeks. Um, so I am videoing, so I'll be doing loads and loads of videos on, because I haven't done any for six months, so how to use all, all this stuff and all the stuff that's just been coming, so there'll be loads and loads of those videos. Um, the other next nice exciting thing is I've got my book, really, really excited about this because it's just so bright, it's just so me, so um, distinctly delusional, and it's, um, again, this was all hand done, this was done as if it was um, a journal page, so it's very, very bright, it's packed with information, but the exciting thing about it is, it's a technique book, so, and each technique book, each technique is separate, so this is ghosting, here's what, I will talk about ghosting, why I do ghosting, the way to do it, the, uh, the supplies used, and a full page of what it looks like. Because to me, that's really, really important that they can see that's what it's supposed to look like. And then eight step-by-steps um, of, of how to do it. And Tim took all these photographs bless him Aww. yes because they, they said we want you to do another book I said I'm not doing one I said you have to help and he said well if I photograph it will you do it so I said yes thinking he wouldn't and he did uh. so we made another book so he did Superman over there did all the photographs but it's nice because then it goes on the next step the next step it's all ink except there's a bit of paint at the back because this was done before the ink uh, before the paint came out okay so Very that's good. the book which I'm really really pleased about but the big thing is <gasps> The Dilutions paints, <coughs> okay, um, some of you may know, some of you may not know, but in, uh, Dilutions was mine before I came over to Ranger, I had a, a big range of it in England, and I had paints, I had inks, I had paints, I had powders, and, but we, when we decided to launch it with Ranger, you can't come in with a big range, so we started with 12 inks, and I've just been, because this is the core, so I've been concentrating on the core product with the inks for three years. Um, knowing that the paints would come back in. So to, to a lot of people, this is a new thing for Dilutions, but to me, it's not. It's something that I've used all the time. I know a lot of people are thinking, well, oh, the, he's got paint, she's got paint, they've given her paint. It's not <laughs> like that. I've got my paint back, do you see what I mean? And it's in a very, very um, similar consistency, to, uh, um, Oh, value to what it was before but they've actually made it better I'm really surprised oh. it comes in these great big jars because I'm very hands-on so it comes you see all the color and what's so nice about it as uh, you know why would you buy my paint rather than buy somebody else's paint because mine is gorgeous <laughs> <laughs> it's true look just look at the stand can you see in your stores that is just gonna people are just coming and touching it women we're terrible we're like kids in a candy store we touch 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 but really what I wanted it clear because people say to me you see that pink what color pink is it well it's pink <laughs> so you, you know so now they can tell it is the first 12 colors of my ink so they match my inks apart from Pure Sunshine is not in there because I wanted white in this release, so I took Pure Sunshine out. So there's 10 colours and then there's black and white, okay, of the paint in there. Um, the difference between my paint and everybody else's paint is mine is made 
especially for me, to work with my journals. I'm a journaler, so I work in journals. I work very, very quickly. I'm very impatient. I have ADHD, so I'm flipping from one thing to the other. I don't want paint to dry. I don't want my book to stick together. I want my inks to be able to work on top. So this paint is made especially. Tim's Distress Paint, which is beautiful, it acts as a resist to my inks, so you can't use them. Okay, Dina's paint is beautiful, it's soft and thick, too thick for my, it takes too long to dry for me and I can't spread it enough. Okay. So you can see that we all have our own requirements in the different things. So that's what your customers, you know, if you've got journalers who are customers, they will be skipping and dancing because they'll want this type of paint. Okay, it's not just for journals, we do it on the, you know, on the paper. Oh, I forgot to tell you about the paper. The mixed media paper, this is my paper. You won't find it under the Dilutions line because we wanted to, to show people. Some people are a bit frightened of Dilutions. They think it's messy and they're like, oh, I don't really want to go near there. So we wanted to show that pe this is good for everybody. It's not just good for Dilutions. It's actually the paper that is in the Dilutions journal. The paper that everybody wants, the paper that everybody loves. This is it. It's called mixed media cardstock um, and it's available in packs of 10. Okay, and that's what I'm going to demo on. So even if you haven't got people who do journaling, they can. Do, it's very, very smooth. You can pass the sheet round. Um, and it's just in this one size. Just in this one size at the moment, yeah. So, um, but anybody can use it. They can cut it up for cards. They can do tags. They can do. I'm hoping to get tags in it as well. Um, why is it so special? It's only really special for dilutions. Um, I used to use Manila and I loved Manila and I did my techniques and it was fine. Then I got my journal, got this paper and when you go back to use Manila after using this, it's like, oh, it's just not got the, because this releases the ink, it's got special properties in it. So when you do all my ghosting things, it releases the ink out. So, um, so if your customers are already using Manila, the only benefit to using this is the colour because it's that lovely off-white. Um, but any Dilutions customers, this is the one that we've all been waiting for. Okay, so that's why I'm skipping and dancing and everybody else is like, yeah, it's the media cardstock. I'm like, no, it is the media cardstock. So, um, lots of techniques of doing the paint. I can only show you so much in this short time. Um, so come back and see me later during the day. As I say, I am doing lots and lots of videos. I'm, I'm behind on videos. I don't use a paintbrush. You'll see there's no paintbrush here. Two reasons I don't use a paintbrush. One, when you go into a class, I, I try to teach people who've got no experience whatsoever. If you go into a class with a paintbrush, people get frightened. They think they've got to be artistic and they ruin all your paintbrushes and it costs you a fortune <laughs> replacing them. So I don't use a paintbrush. I use baby wipes. I just use the, I use the Kirkland brand over here. In England, I use the Huggies brand. Yeah, that's my favourite. Yes, the, the baby wipes. Um, I use Tim's um, mini distress tool. I love this mini one. Um, I don't use the large one, I use the mini one. I have one for every colour of my paints. You can just change the tops, but I, I just don't want to. I use, so I use those tons. I use um, Dina's palette knife, and I also use a brayer. Okay, so I'm gonna show you, quickly show you a few of those techniques. Um, the, the one I don't have time to show you is this one. This is my block technique. Can you see where it's, it's sort of in blocks of colour? Um, and what I do is I take the paint on here and I, I do a block, I paint a block. Then I go again with another colour, then another colour. Then I, do, I repeat it. My colour is semi-opaque because I'm all about the layers. I want to build it up. So to get a strong colour, you need to go over it again. For example, if you look at the board there, where the dilution paints are, they are journals, they're my small journals. And we painted each of those twice to get that solid colour. Okay, so um, so this was we did this twice, and then I went back over uh, with stencils in each bit. So I don't really have time to show that one. Um, there's another one of it, but it's really really popular and it's really easy. As usual, everything I do is really really easy. So I won't be showing that one, but I'll start for, first with the baby wipe one because it's just so simple. I've taught children for years. Um, and you've just got to make things really simple for them. So this is it. What colours shall I do? I think I'll do orange and brown. I haven't done that. The jars are really, really um, large jars because I want to put my baby wipes in. I want to put my craft, craft scraper in. The downside to that is a bigger surface area means they're exposed to the air more. So if you live in a really dry place, 
these are going to dry up quicker. So what I always say, tell your customers um, that if they live in a very dry place, at the end of the day, spritz each paint with water, put the lid on, shake it, put it away. And spritzing the water will replace the water that's evaporated. Okay. Otherwise, these are just going to dry up, okay? I use them and put the lid back on straight away. And I live in England where we don't have any dry things, but just to be warned. Um, so I just take the baby wipe and I just go straight in and I just go around. I like things quick, okay? And I like things even, so... There you go, page painted. Is a paper towel too dry? Is that why you do a baby wipe? Yeah, because the baby wipe blends, but look, it's dry. It's dry already. So you can very quickly get your colour on there because it's so fluid. Can I, I'll just pass one around, actually. Just be careful because these are fluid paints. So don't tip it, but I just want you to do that so you can see the fluidity of them. But just be careful you don't tip. Um, so then I'm going to go in with a second colour and I'm just going to apply with a baby wipe and then I'm just going to blend with my fingers. But you see how easy and simple that is to blend. So just apply with a baby wipe, blend with your fingers. If you don't like it and you're quick, you can just take a plain baby wipe and blend it down and in. Okay, so everything's simple to do. Always simple with me. Not always simple to start with, but by the time I've finished, you know, <laughs> I've simplified it for people. So you can do um, like that, okay? I could build up more colours on there. I could blend more colours in. I'm just doing that to start with. But again, look, it's dry. Oh, I've got blue there. It's dry. The, thank you, darling. The, um, the paper isn't curling. It isn't buckling. It's just very simple. There's some baby wipes there. Did you stick your finger in? Yeah. <laughs> um, so it's perfectly compatible with my inks. It was really, really important to me that the inks dried on top and that they dried quickly because, again, I, I don't like hanging around. So um, I don't want people to think, you know, oh, she's not using inks anymore. I will be combining them all together as usual. But again, look, it's not sat on the top. It it's works perfectly. Now, I, can, I do painted backgrounds and put ink on the top. I do inked backgrounds and put paint on the top. Everything coordinates together. But you can also go back in with the paint. Now, when I use paint through stencils, I always use Tim's tool. And I take the paint from the lid and I get a little bit of paint, not a lot. People get too much. And I work it in and then I just run round. So I'm just, so there's ink on there, there's paint on there, there's all sorts. And I could build it up, build it up, and build it up. Okay. Very quick um, clean up. I just wipe it with a kitchen roll. Okay. The a baby wipe that I used, I don't throw away. My work is really organic. Every time I do something, I'm making something else. So I take the baby wipe and I just prep another page ready. Because sometimes you don't want a full coverage. You just want something like this. We can maybe make it sort of a tartan. So you wouldn't be able to get that effect without using a baby wipe that was always used. I can go somewhere else and I can add some more to this. You see, so... You know, there's the, the paints, even though they're fluid, they're very highly pigmented. So this pigment is just going to last and last and last. So I could go on and on and on. Let's get you can see, I'm a hoarder of baby wipes. I get rid of those baby wipes. There we go. Um, so the next thing that I'm going to show you is... Um, so I would continue that and finish it up. But you can see with all those layers on, it's not, it's not soaking. Um, so the, the other way is I'm going to show you with the brayer. I always like to do something different and no, I haven't, well, somebody might be painting with a brayer, but I haven't seen anybody. Um, when I, in my classes, we use a brayer a lot with some of the stenciling techniques. So people are used to having a brayer. If they're in dilutions, they're used to having a brayer. So I like, if, I've, if somebody's bought something to use, I like to show them different ways to use it as well. Okay, so I'll do a brayered um, background here. So I'm going to take the green. And all I do is I just pick some paint and just put it onto the work surface. Um, and these are really easy to screw back on as well. So I just get into the habit of putting them back on. I just I clean everything on whatever I'm doing. I'm terrible, aren't I? Then I take the brayer and I just roll, just roll some of it out. And then I'm not, <clears throat> I'm just sort of lightly skipping. Well, not skipping, just um, 
I want to skip areas, that's what I mean. And you don't have to skip as you're doing it. I just want to lightly <laughs> <laughs> skip areas, yeah. Um, I start off light like this. If you wanted it to be more solid, you could go again and, and do. But So I start off light. Now, this is solid, this is solid. So you will never get the remainder off. Um, so what I do is I just clip, I just dry that and then I usually draw patterns. Take a tag or take a journal page. Oh, that's one that's, sorry. Huh. And it gives you, uh, it's a monoprint. <laughs> cool. which is, yeah, and it gives you a monoprint. So I do that, throw it to one side and then take the next color. Let's take turquoise. This is practically dry as well, so I go straight on top of it here, just add some paint. It's, it's, everything's foolproof. The, the problem is people think too much. People think too much in. So they're like, I can't do. They, go, they look at this. This is a braid. This is what I'm doing. This is, and they go, I can't do that. It's so hard. It's one easy step after one easy step after one easy step after one easy step. Do you see what I mean? So everything has to be easy for people to do. So I'm just sort of going into some areas. Now, because um, I, with the inks, you have to work in warms and cools. You have to work in the colour families because otherwise you make a lot of mud. With paint, you can still make mud, but because my paint dries so quickly, I could add an orange in here, which would be unforgivable on others, but it will work, okay? So I've got this here. I'm just going to more. So nothing is ever wasted. Sometimes I'll do writing, sometimes I'll do hearts, things like that. Um, I'm, gonna, I'm actually going to wipe this now because I am going to bring orange just to frighten you all. <laughs> so I just want to take that up off there. Most of that is to dry. <laughs> no, but with blue. Orange and blue make brown. So I just want to show you. So we'll just add some more out. Uh -huh. But can you see how easy those jars go back on together? So we have orange here, we don't have brown, can you see? So it might go a bit funny there actually, but you can, and so you can just build these, these up. And this will always stay, this will always stay all the way through. So then I could go back again with all three colours. I could add another three colours. I could just keep going as much as I wanted. But I like to bring my st the stencils in, okay? So I normally will go back to the colour I started with. A little bit on. Work it in. Um, and just add. And the trick is to stick with the colours you've already used. And then no matter what you do, you can't do wrong if you if you brought in another color that you haven't used there's there is a tendency you could do something wrong but can you see it's just building the layers and because the paint is translucent well semi-opaque you can see the layers underneath as well so you just build it up this wipes off really really quickly you um i'm just going to get rid of that usually i would use that up till it's dry on another page but because i'm demoing quick i'm not um, let's take, let's take the skulls. We haven't done the skulls all day. <laughs> I'm actually just going to press on that. I'll do the skulls in black. Now these, once you've been using them a while, they should have, can you see? I don't need to go back and put tons on. Black always, when I said earlier, don't add another color. Black is not a color. Black is just black. Do you see what I mean? And it, it just it just evens everything out. Uh, one of the things with the black, just before I finish this off, just let me show you because this is gorgeous. Um, I've been wanting a black journal for ages and they don't seem to be listening to me. <laughs> How many people want a black journal? Please write in. Don't mention my name, but please write in. <laughs> but how's about this then? And this is why my paint is so good as well. This is why it's made for me for journals. Look. Amazing. And when it's done, it will just look. People say, How do you get black pages in your journals? Oh. I'm like, Well, you know. And then people go, oh, Have you got a black journal? No. But look, very, very quickly. I can't believe that. 
and it's practical look it's practically dry the paper isn't warping that is the beauty of my paint this is why my paint is so different i know everywhere you go people go my paint my paint my paint mm -hmm. my paint is um, is a journaler paper card paint you see okay. i'm not saying everybody else's is is it just wasn't right for me i could not get what i wanted so um we brought mine back so you can just continue adding i could add orange on here i could add white back in let me show you on here I'm not sure if you can see where I've got, oh, the black's gone, where I've got the white in. You can just build the layers. Now, these have got loads of layers on, but again, if you feel them, they're not thick, they're oh, not yeah. bulky. They, um, you know, they're not going to add tons of bulk to your journal. Um, they're just, you know, it's just really, really nice. It's so great for stencils, huh? Oh, fabulous for cool. stencils. But you must keep this quite dry. Don't use it too wet. Now, these are, are like the stencils that I was telling you about earlier. So I put them, I put the shape on, and then this is my black paint. I, I painted around it and did the shape around the edge. Again, with this, I put the shape on um, and then just took the stencil. This is what there is definitely going to be a video of. This is really cool to do as well. You just take your tool and you just add circles that's a bit pale to see but can you see that background is just all circles um, these are all paint this is white layered up on the top um, although they're matte they've got that slight slight shimmer uh, because i didn't want just a, a chalky see this is the white on the top you can still see all underneath again that's just boing 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 uh -huh. this is brayered this is the block technique this is the paint and then the black on the top loads and loads and loads of techniques and there's lots of samples everywhere as well um wow. so any questions mm -hmm. yeah. thank you and please come back then i can show you more and do it slower and do the block technique and things like that um and and look out for the videos and hope you enjoy it okay thank, thank you for your time thank bye you. <laughs> bye Noel. thank you i just want to say thank you